hey, you're back. You couldn't wait to hear Chapter 7, Penguin Poop, of David Williams' Codename Bananas. Could you? I couldn't either. I've been so excited. I've been thinking about it all night, thinking I couldn't wait to read that. Well, let's get started with Chapter 7, Penguin Poop. London Zoo was in the Regent's Park, one of the grandest outdoor spaces in the city. The park was closed at night, so Eric had to climb over the railings. Once inside, he circled the outer fence of the zoo for a while, searching for a way in. Ahead, he spotted a tall tree in the park, the branches of which drooped over into the zoo. Thinking again about how Gertrude would climb it, he scaled the tree trunk using his hands and feet, just like the gorilla did. From the tree trunk, the boy shimmied across one of the branches on his bottom. But, as he scrambled further from the tr away from the trunk of the branch, then the inevitable happened. Crack! The branch snapped. Eric found himself tumbling through the air. Whoosh! Ah! Splash! He was underwater. Not just that. <coughs> Excuse me. He could sense dozens of creatures swimming around him. He had fallen in a pool. Had he fallen in a pool of piranhas? Was he going to be gobbled alive? Eric desperately swam to the surface and took a gasp of air. Gasp! No, these were much bigger than piranhas, and far friendlier too. They were penguins. Squawk, squawk, squawk. The boy had plunged into the penguin pool. It had just been built and was more like a water park with slides and a fountain. Perfect if you were a penguin. Not so good if you were a boy. The slippery birds played around Eric, pecking at him, and even perched on his head. <coughs> Get off, he said affectionately as he guided the penguin back into the water. Eric swam to the edge of the pool and began clambering up the side, but it was slippery, and he plunged back into the pool again. Oomph! Splash! Squawk, squawk, squawk! This time Eric swam over to the edge, and then he heard a familiar sound. Clink, clink, clunk. It was Sid. What are you doing in there? The old man called down. Taking a swim, called Eric, trying to make light of the situation. Sid huffed and shook his head. Wait there. Clink, clink, clunk. There was a silence for a moment before the old man returned with a long-handled net. It was the one he used to fishing out the penguin poop. Hold on to this. Eric did as he was told, and Sid hauled him out of the water. You're soaking wet, said the old man. That normally happens when you go for a swim, replied Eric. What are you doing in the zoo so late? It's way after closing time. I was worried about Gertrude. She looked so frightened today. She was. But you should have tucked up in bed by now, young man. So should you, said Eric. <coughs> this stopped the old man in his tracks. I know, but I was sure there was going to be another bombing raid. We've had them at night after night for weeks. I wanted to be here for all the animals. Me too, exclaimed the boy. Sid looked up into the sky. It's quiet up there in the clouds right now. You should go home. As if on cue, the air raid silent wailed. Woo! I spoke too soon, hissed the old man. Come with me. He grabbed Eric by the hand and led him to the through the zoo. Clink, clank, clunk. The zoo might have been in darkness because of the nightly blackout, but it was noisier than ever. The air raid warning had woken up the animals. Roar! Hoot! Shh! Yelp! Whoop! Honk! Are we the only ones here? Asked Eric as he held his great uncle's hand tightly. No. There'll be the night watchman, Bata, or Corporal Bata as he demands to be known. We'll have to keep an eye out for him. He's the only one who's meant to be in the zoo after dark. Eric could hear a distant humming sound next to rumbling. Finally, there was a loud drone as the Nazi planes came right over their heads. <coughs> flying in neat formation as they powered through the night sky. Then the first bomb whistled through the air. Whoosh! And the next. Whoosh! And the next. Whoosh! Then the explosions began. Kaboom! 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 Lightning and striking all over London. Searchlights scoured the sky before big guns fired at the Nazi planes from the ground. Fire engine bells rang. Ding, ding, ding. 
Eric could just make out the sound of people screaming and shouting, Ah! Help! Run! The boy's heart raced. The noise, the lights, the debris. Kaboom! Another bomb exploded, even nearer than the last. Kaboom! And another. Kaboom! And another. The elephants raised their trunks and hooted. Woo! The camels reared up on their back legs and moaned. Woo! The lions leaped from rock to rock and roared. Roar! Kaboom! <coughs> However, the, sound of sound, the saddest sound of all came from the gorilla's cage. Gertrude, huge hands were covering her big ears as she tried to block out the booms of the bombs. Kaboom! At every explosion, she let out a shriek. Yee! She rocked from side to side. Eric broke away from the old man and hurled himself at the cage. Kaboom! Yee! Gertrude! cried the boy, but the gorilla wouldn't even open her eyes. Gertrude! Kaboom! Raisins! shouted Eric. Ye what? spluttered Sid. It was clear that all the things he was expecting the boy to shout at this point, raisins, was a long way down the list. Raisins are a favorite. After bananas, of course. But you can't get bananas these days. A handful of raisins might just calm her nerves. You're right, agreed Sid. Clever boy. We'll make a zoo capable of you yet. The boy beamed. Maybe one day. But where am I going to get raisins at this time of night? Kaboom. A snack bar might have some. I don't have any money. You won't need any money. It's closed. Well, if it's closed, how am I going to get in? You'll have to break in. Eric gulped. He'd never broken in anywhere. Ever. And he was rather hoping to get through this whole life without doing so. Climb through the window, shouted Sid over, t over the noise. Grab some raisins and run. Kaboom. And that will do it for Chapter 7, Penguin Poop. Now remember, you've got some questions to answer. If you don't know the answers, do not just put I don't know or skip or anything other than doing your work. Go back and re-listen to the story. You can always replay it. You can always re-listen. Remember to make the complete sentences and restate the question. All right. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow for Chapter 8.